The power of mushrooms. The huge potential of mushrooms is only just being discovered. They could even help save the planet from man-made disasters. Part one: The Secret Kingdom. Science is only now waking up to the reality of life on Earth. We used to see life as dominated by two distinct kingdoms: plants, flora, and animals, fauna. But recently, biologists have realized that there is another, much larger and more important kingdom of life that science has almost entirely ignored: fungi, more commonly called mushrooms. In fact, a mushroom is just the fruit of a fungus. This means that all mushrooms are fungi, but not all fungi are mushrooms. Most of Earth's fungal life is hidden. It is underground, inside plants, and even inside our own bodies. Neither plants nor animals, fungi live everywhere, no matter the environment. Inside the exploded Chernobyl nuclear reactor in Ukraine, for instance, there is a colony of fungi that is feeding happily off the lethal radiation. The planet's largest living being that we know of is a fungus. Hidden underground, it covers an area of around 10 square kilometers in Oregon, USA. It may weigh as much as 35,000 tons and is thought to be about 8,000 years old. A single organism, it is composed, like all fungi, of billions of tiny filaments known as mycelium, all connected, all communicating, and all acting with a common purpose. A single strand of mycelium is about two micrometers wide. For comparison, a human hair is around 50 micrometers wide. If you took the mycelium in a single gram of earth and placed it end to end, the resultant line would be anywhere from 100 meters to 10 kilometers long. So the average fungal mycelium network has more connections than there are synapses. In the human brain, and they act with what one can only describe as intelligence. Part two, the underground exchange. Plants have always needed fungi to survive. When the first plant life moved from the sea, they did not have root systems to survive on land. Instead, they depended on mycelium to fix them to the earth and provide them with nutrients from the soil. In exchange for carbon that the plants extracted from the atmosphere, plants ultimately develop root systems, but the symbiosis with fungi continues in an extraordinary way. Researchers have demonstrated that trees communicate with each other via electrical impulses in the mycelium. Similarly, parent trees use mycelium to transport carbon and sugars to their offspring. The fungi still exchange nutrients for carbon with the plants, but there is a dynamic marketplace in operation. When nutrients are scarce, the mycelium demands a higher carbon price in exchange for them. The entire system is intelligent, although it has nothing we can call a brain. To combat the climate crisis that humans have created, this relationship between fungi and plant life is crucial. It's recently been discovered that mycelium are responsible for 50 to 70 percent of the atmospheric carbon sequestered in the Earth. Our first step, therefore, should be to ban fungicides on arable crops. This destroys the mycorrhizal fungal networks in the soil, stopping carbon sequestration and damaging the fertility of the soil itself. Part three: Humanity and mushrooms. Humanity's relationship with fungi goes much further than simply eating mushrooms. We depend on fungi for the bread we eat, the fizzy drinks we love, the vaccines and antibiotics we use, and just as mycelium grows inside plants, we have fungi inside our own bodies. They and other microbes digest the food we eat, so we are as intimately connected to fungi as other life forms are. But that connection will soon become even deeper. Mycoremediation is a word that you will hear increasingly in coming years.
It is the science of using fungi to repair the damage we have done to our environment, and its possibilities are amazing. Take oil spills that enter the soil and render it toxic. Mycologists have demonstrated that fungi can not only digest the hydrocarbons and purify the soil, they will even produce edible mushrooms in the process. The same is true of the billions of disposable children's nappies that go into the trash each year. What else? Herbicides such as glyphosate, pesticides, chemical weapons, plastics, explosives. Fungi can digest these and hundreds of other toxins. Fungi can help us in even more personal ways, too. In recent years, medical researchers have returned to studying the possibilities of psilocybin, the drug produced by magic mushrooms. This research began in the 1960s, but was abandoned when governments made psilocybin illegal in their panic at the social revolutions of the hippie era. Recent studies have focused on patients suffering from depression, anxiety, and other psychological disorders after being diagnosed with terminal cancer. 80% found that a single dose cured them of their psychological condition. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to be the chemical reaction in their brain that is important, but the nature of the hallucinogenic experience they have. Patients talk of ego dissolution and experiencing a movement from feelings of separateness to interconnectedness with all existence. The effect of this perception often stays with them, changing how they perceive themselves, their lives, and their approaching death. So, mushrooms build networks, and humans use drugs made from mushrooms. How strange, then, that a drug made from mushrooms makes us feel as if we, too, are part of an infinite and beautiful network of life. Perhaps, some mycologists suggest, fungi don't only communicate with plants. 